I'm going to do a little recording today of ScreenFlow and how powerful they are with templates to speed up the whole intro, animation, crossfades, intro, outro, audio, green screen. Everything can be done and automated inside a template. I wanted to show you what it looked like by going up to the icon and, and doing configure recording, but obviously as I'm recording, it doesn't allow me to go in there. But what you would do with the template is instead of just recording a screen, and selecting your microphone and your input, you can actually click on one of the templates that you made in ScreenFlow and uh, click on record and it uses that template as a base for that recording. So I wanted to show you that because it makes a lot more sense when you're outside of this. Maybe I'll do a little um, screen grab, image grab of what you see in that template section um, because it makes it hugely powerful to use ScreenFlow. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. So here's a bit of an arrangement of a template and if you look at the very very top here where the, the the name of the file is where it says one ramp dash vlog screen flow you'll see that to the right of it dash it says template so it's a template structure that steamflow understands for me to use as kind of an input if you like instead of it just recording the screen the camera the mic it uses this template that once i record all those three things it arranges those three elements into this file in a certain way so i can pre-format the look of it and this obviously speeds up productivity in, in making videos so what you've got in screenflow 8 point i think this is 8.22 let me have a quick look 8.22 right what you've got in there is the ability to insert with the insert tab here template placeholder clips so you'll see that these two top ones are grayed out because i've got screen recording and computer audio i'm capturing that and camera and microphone now you can do ios devices as well if they're plugged in over usb so it can record the screen from the from the the phone which is kind of nice for doing like reviews if you're doing it on mobile but i have in this particular template template the top two recording and uh, camera and microphone so let me step through a little bit how this works so at the top here what i've created is the actual borders that surround this so that's on its own layer so if I if I double click into it, I've, collect, uh, I've collected those together and nested them together just to make it easier. Instead of having multiple layers, I might as well take the four layers. So I have the left side, the right side, the bottom and the top. And this means that I can go in these at any point and change these colors to a different color if I want. So if I just double click all the way through, you'll see on the right hand side color and I can just select a different color and boom, that border is different color now. So I do that just for customization point of view. I can go in and customize those at any point. Uh, you'll also see in here that I've got them as a certain length as well. So if I double click on it, I've set the duration for all of those borders to five minutes, even though I probably wouldn't have the borders on for five minutes. I've just pushed them out so that it doesn't do any weird things on the recording. Uh, most of the time when I record a little vlog or an update for things like one ramp, for instance, it won't be any longer than that. So you'll see back on the main frame layout of layers that this goes, this actually runs, if I scroll left to right, it, it runs for two seconds. So that intro borders will stay on the screen for two seconds. When I go past that, they disappear, right? So underneath that, I have the intro logo and text. So that's another group of layers again, which is my top text, my text underneath, my image, and then an annotation. That annotation is actually a black background that I've just changed the layer opacity on it. So when it comes together, that's what it looks like. It's kind of made up. Now you'll notice on the one ramp as well on the text, if I go through to that, you won't, you can't see it on here because it's on a black background. But if we go over to the right hand side here, I've actually got, if I scroll down a little bit, I've actually got a drop shadow on that particular text. Now this is where it gets hugely powerful for me because I don't know if a lot of people realize how powerful the actions are inside of um, ScreenFlow. So for instance, let me just scroll down a little bit. So I could explain the next two placeholders, but let me scroll down to audio. So what I've done here with this layer is I've extracted the audio from the camera and microphone placeholder. So I have a separate layer, separate channel for that. So if I mess around with the audio in any way, I can just I can play with it on its own layer without having to cut and change and sometimes you have problems when you cut a piece out that you have audio so you just have the audio running all the way through now I can select that layer 
and click the audio tab at the top right here now you'll see if I scroll down a little bit that they have audio filter. it doesn't show any audio filters on here but I can actually apply an audio filter to be used on that layer before I've recorded it now that probably doesn't make a lot of sense so let me just click on this and show you what I mean so I'm going to click on this action and in here I have a style preset called Apple effects batch so if I double click that that then applies this Apple codec to that layer so what I'm doing here is I've already set up my compression my master game my release time my limiter all of these different things to help with the sat audio sound from the mic as pre-processing after I've recorded the video so what happens is uh, instead of me just recording the screen the web camera and the audio it uses this template to take those three inputs and apply effects to them so basically what I'm doing is I, I just fire up my camera like normal make sure my green screen looks okay and when I finish recording it presents me with a file just like this but with all that content changed and adapted based on these settings. So it really speeds up production. It means I don't have to do any intro. The intro is always going to be right. It's going to be two seconds. Um, you can see here on this camera and microphone placement as we go from left to right that it moves. So what I've done is because of the text being on the screen, the webcam image behind you, it's kind of my face is lost behind the text. So I'm kind of moving it across to the right as the intro runs. I'm still talking away, but by the time I get to two seconds, what happens then is I've cut the camera and microphone placeholder, put it on another layer because I found some weird awkwardness with ScreenFly that you only find from playing around with these kind of templates. And then what I've got is I've got a thing that moves that image back into the middle. Now, here's an interesting thing with cutting those things. I couldn't work out yesterday why my audio was out of sync. And what I had accidentally done is I'd cut it I'd copied this this layer and pasted it below and not realized that I have to cut the amount of time out before it otherwise it's going to play from the beginning of the track so that was kind of like a thing that took me like an hour and a bit to get my head around now you'll see on here as well that this slowly moves in like there's an animation of that placeholder moving back the background by the way is a video file at the bottom here which is just playing in the background so we've got layers on top of layers here right now so what i've done with this uh, animation is quite simple all you do is you select a layer and you click on the action button here and that action then once you've clicked it puts another layer on top of that layer and that's basically saying okay you want me to do something now with this layer so you can cut this at certain parts of this layer and do certain actions. So you might want to move something on, you might want to enlarge something, you might want to rotate it, you might want to crop it. And you can do all that time sensitive in a template and then just use that template for all future videos. So for instance, what I've got here is I've got the borders, the intro overlay, a movement that happens from left to right, and then from right to left brings it back in again. And then underneath, I've got a video that's playing out that if I want to, I can cut that video. And underneath it is also a screen recording. So you can see here at the very bottom, it says screen recording and computer audio placement. So it's picking up any audio that's playing out on my computer or anything that I'm recording on the screen. So even though I'm talking away with a webcam on a green screen, if I want to jump to my desktop at any point, I can just cut this out and then... If we move it forward, you'll see it says placeholder. Now the placeholder is actually the screen recording underneath. So I might shrink down my webcam, for instance, and I can show you what I mean by that. I might take my webcam here, which is already shrunken down, break that by pressing T, highlight this and do action. You'll see that the yellow box turns up and then I'm gonna click on this box next to it, which is my style presets. So these style presets, once you've found a number of effects that you want to apply, you can actually save them. So if we go into one of these, like this one is the one to move it down into the bottom left-hand corner and scale it. If I want to, I can actually edit. If I double click on that, you'll see it applies those effects. So it positions it in the bottom left-hand corner and it scales it. Now, you'll probably notice that it's jumped to the end of that yellow box. But if I scroll back, 
you'll see what's happening is it's taking it from 100% applying those style presets and shrinking it down into the bottom corner. So you can do some really powerful templating inside of ScreenFlow to really speed up your production for making videos for DTube or YouTube or anything like that. Um, if this was interesting to you and you think a course on this would be valuable on uh, Skillshare or Udemy, do let me know and uh, I'll put something together. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.